Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We start uh, the chapter two uh, of the biology 5090 O levels, and this is the new 2023 syllabus which we are going to discuss in these videos. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss 2.1 and the first point, and this is understand that organisms can be classified into groups by the features they share. Then describe a species as a group of organisms that can reproduce to produce fertile offsprings. Describe the binomial system of naming species as an internationally agreed system in which the scientific name of an organism is made up of two parts, showing number first the genus and then the species. Construct and use dichotomous keys based on identifiable features. So these are four points which we need to discuss in this video so as to cover up uh, the 2.1 of the syllabus. Now, if you look at this drawing of uh, a whole lot of furniture and you must be wondering why am I talking about this? Well, let's look at it. Which ones are chairs? Which one will you decide is a chair? Well, you'll say, okay, miss, this is a chair. This is a chair. Uh, this is a chair. This is a chair. And let's look at, no, this is a stool. So we can't say this is a chair. This is a chair. Then, uh, well, this is a chair as well. And this is a chair as well. This is a chair, that's a stool, so that's not a chair. That's a sofa, so that's not a chair. That's a sofa, that's a two-seater sofa. Uh, that's a cupboard, that's a desk, that's a cupboard. So what are the common features about a chair? A chair will have four legs, it will have a seat, and it will have a back because uh, if it doesn't have a back, then it's a stool, and that's a, not a chair. So we look at the common features, and uh, a chair will have a back as well. It may or may not have armrests. So common features, now you've got to look that in biology, in the organisms that we are going to look through. So this is just to make you understand what do I mean by the common features, and how do we decide, okay, these are the chairs in this uh, diagram. Now let's look at the first term that you talk about is species. Now what is species? It's the smallest natural group of organisms. A species is a group of organisms that can reproduce to produce fertile offsprings. Now they are identical in anatomy, physiology, and their behavior patterns. Now what are the examples of anatomy? Do they have an exoskeleton? I mean we don't, human beings don't have an exoskeleton. We have an endoskeleton. The bones are inside and then we have the muscles on top of them. Then physiology, physiology means how does the body work? Does the animal have lungs? Does the animal have gills? Does the animal have feathers? Does it not have feathers? Does it have mitochondria? Does it not have mitochondria? Then behavior patterns, are they, do they, all cats meow? All dogs bark? So we have, they have to be all similar. If we classify this, any organism in one species, then it must have the same anatomy, same physiology and the same behavior. So it's a basically understanding that when we say it's a species, it has to have all these similarities. Now, how do we decide that they are same species? Is because if you cross them and then they produce fertile offspring, then they're same species. But look at this example, a horse and a donkey is crossed results in a mule. Now, mules are sterile, unable to reproduce. The conclusion is horse and donkeys are different species. Now, another diagram showing you the different types of foxes, you see. When you, when you think of animals, I want you to develop a concept of looking at that. They're all foxes, but they're different now. There's a phoenix fox, there's a red fox, there's a marble fox, there's a silver fox. Now, if they all come into one category, then they'll come into one species, and there might be many species. Now, when the species are grouped together, then that is called a genus. So many species grouped together becomes a genus. So how are we going to use the binomial nomenclature to really use these two words, genus and species. Now, when you look at the binomial nomenclature, the common name is the tiger, which we just know, and we all use it very often. But the scientific name is going to be under two headings. One is the genus and one is the species. Now, the genus, what you've got to understand, has to have a capital letter. The first letter has to be capital, Panthera. And then, of course, the next one, this has to be a lowercase. This does not have to be capital. And then this has to be written in italicized. Now, what is italicized? Let's look at that. Now, another point to clarify genus and species. Genus groups are bigger than species groups, but organisms are less alike. 
Now you can see here, this one is slightly different, this one, this one, they are all less alike. Species groups are smaller than the genus groups, but the organisms are more alike. And so same genus, same species. Here, same genus, but different species. Now the common uh, classification hierarchy is something like this, that in the beginning we have the domain, and then we have the kingdoms, then we have phylum, then we have class, then we have order, then family, and then genus and species. Now, basically the others, I've just introduced you to that, but I don't expect you to really know that, but I feel some of the students are keen to know more details, so I'm doing it for them. So, genus and species comes right at the end. Then the rules for naming, scientific names should be italicized in print, or if you can't italicize it, then you underline them when they are written. Always capitalize the genus name. So the genus name must always be in capital letters and the lowercase species. So scientific name for man is Homo sapiens. Homo H is capital, S is small uh, case. Genus may be abbreviated, but not the species. So you can have said H full stop sapiens. So these are the rules for naming the genus and the species. Now a quick comparison of genus versus species. A genus is a principal taxonomic classification which ranks below family and above species. Uh, higher classification than species, composed of different species, consists of large number of organisms. And the first part of the binomial name of a particular organism, binomial name. In species we have, a species is a closely related group of organisms which comprise similar characteristics and interbreed to produce fertile offsprings. Most fundamental level of organi organism classification, composed of different subspecies, consists of a fewer number of organisms, and the second part of the binomial name of a particular organism. Now I just want to educate you a little about the italic font. It's a font. It's a cursive, slanted typeface. So what we have to understand is a cursive, slanted typeface. Now this is the normal one, but when you write it slightly like this, then this is called the italicized font. Similarly, you can see here, we have the normal one here, then we have the normal italic, then we have the, uh, another word impact, and then this is the impact oblique italic. So italics is a font, and you can have these different italic fonts, but I just want you to know what it is, so I just want to educate you about this font, that there are the different types of uh, fonts. Another important feature is that the chromosome number is a characteristic feature of members of a particular species. Organisms with different diploid numbers are unlikely to be able to interbreed. In cases where different species do interbreed, offsprings are usually infertile and they cannot form functional gametes. For instance, a horse is 64. So it is 32 pairs. And a donkey is 2 and is 62, so 31 pairs. So when you cross a horse and a donkey, you get a mule, and that has 63 chromosomes. Now, in such organisms, there will be no gametes can be formed, because in the gametes, half meiosis has to take place. And when meiosis has to take place, every pair has to give in one of its pair. But when there is an un... when there is a... it's not an even number, 63 is not an even number, it's an odd number. So then we can't have pairs, we can't have one of each pair. One chromosome is there, so meiosis will not take place and gametes will not be formed. So that is why the mule is going to be infertile. Please understand this. So you cross a horse and a donkey, it becomes a mule. But that tells us that the horse and donkey are separate species. Now coming to the topic of dichotomous key. In the dichotomous tree, you have to realize there has to be two branches. And once you've decided which branch to go on, then you follow the key. Uh, you make suitable choices. And the first question splits the groups into two subheadings. Now let's look at the first example. Dichotomous key here is vertebrate. Now, does it have fur? Does it not have fur? So fur, no fur. If it has fur, it's a mammal. If it has no fur, then does it have feathers or no feathers? If it has feathers, then it's a bird. If it does not have any feathers, no feathers, then does it have a dry skin or does it have a moist skin? If it has a dry skin, then it's a reptile. If it has a moist skin and it has scales, no scales. If it has scales, it's a fish. 
if it has no scale then it's an amphibian so dichotomous keys help us to put all this in the right order and what you need to do is you need to understand this and you need to follow this i'll do a few examples with you to make you understand this now another dichotomous key for insects insects large wings though then it's a butterfly but small or no wings then we go to two other categories very long rare legs shorter rare legs very long rare legs antenna in front of the head very long rare legs they don't have any antenna very long this was very long rare legs so very long then shorter rare legs horned head not horned head so small eyes large eyes so this is how you would do a dichotomous key for insects so i will run through this dichotomous key with you all and see and help you to do this first of all let's look at the two choices needle leaves and non needle leaves if it is needle leaves then it is this one and it is this one if it is needle leaves then you go to two so okay i go to two now needle leaves are clustered needles are in singlets now if they are in clustered now this you can see these are in clusters and these are single so if they are in single then it's a spruce if they are in clusters then it's a pine right so we figured this out now let's go back to non needle leaves so this was non needle leaves now you have to go to 3 now let's go to 3 first now 3 are they simple leaves that is a single leaf or are they compound leaves made up of leaflets so let's look at a single leaf this is a single leaf this is a single leaf this is a single leaf and this is a single leaf so we've got four single leaves so if it was a single leaf then we go to four now let's go to four does it have a smooth edge or a jagged edge now this one is smooth you can see this is a smooth edge and this also has a smooth edge so smooth edge you go to 5 and when we go to 5 leaf edge is smooth so it is magnolia leaf edge is lobed so it's white oak so this one is white oak why because it's lobed ear lobed and this one would be magnolia fine so we've named four of them now now if it was a jagged edge if it was jagged edge then we go to six so let's go to six leaf edge is small and tooth like leaf edge is large and thorny now this one is the large and thorny so this is holly and leaf edge is small and tooth like this one you can see there just this little edge is like this so this is elm then what did we have then we come on to leaf when did we go to seven compound leaves here made of leaf lets compound leaf made of leaf lets compound leaves made of leaf lets then we go to seven now leaf lets one is this one and one is this one which are leaf lets so go to seven so we go to seven leaf lets attached at one single point is attached at all or attached at one single point then that's a chestnut leaf attached at multiple points you can see here this is attached here this is attached here this is attached here this is attached so multiple points so this will be walnut so you understand how we are going to go to the dichotomous key for leaves now i will just give you an empty one and then you can go through it yourself and pause the video and then have a look at it and do it yourself now you can pause the video here 
and have a look at this and do it yourself and see if you can figure it out and where you're getting stuck. So if you've done one or two of these examples, I'm sure you can figure it out very easily. Uh, this video completes the chapter on uh, the second chapter, which is that of classification. And this is the uh, part 2.1 has been completed and we will continue with the 2.2 in the next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please do leave your com comments and if there's anything else I can do, I'll be very happy to do it. Thank you very much.